All right, what's up, folks? Thursday, November 17th, 2016. Rich Van Tassel with you. Giving you tonight's Thursday night football preview. The New Orleans Saints at 4-5, and 2-2 two and two on the road. Travel to Carolina to play the Panthers, who are 3-6, and 2-3 and three at home. Injuries for the visiting Saints. The two questionables, Tavares Cadet running back. Delvin Bro, cornerback. I saw something earlier. Delvin Bro is not expected to play, but he is listed as questionable as of now. It's uh, just about seven uh, on the East Coast. Daniel Lasko, the running back, Terrence Arms to the offensive tackle are out. For the Panthers, two questionables. Geno Gorkowski, center. Ryan K. Khalil, Khalil, excuse me, center. So some injuries there to keep an eye on. The rest are out. A.J. Klein, linebacker. Michael Orr, offensive tackle. Colin Jones, safety. For this game, immediately I'm looking at the Carolina secondary, which has been suspect all season long against that New Orleans passing game, led by Drew Brees, of course, having a sensational season, 24 touchdowns to 7 interceptions, 8 yards shy of 3,000 yards with 7 left to play. He's certainly going to go over uh, 4,000 yards, go over 4,500 yards. We'll see if he can get over 5,000 yards and possibly 50 touchdowns this season. That would be a bit of a stretch. But he does that, gets this team to at least 9-7 and seven when you'd have to discuss him in the MVP consideration, but take it one step at a time at this point. Brandon Cooks has been his favorite receiver, having a good year, but he has other weapons as well. Uh, Carolina, you look at the running game. Jonathan Stewart, he has missed some games, don't get me wrong, but still under four yards per carry. Doesn't have 350 yards, does have four touchdowns, though. Carolina, uh, as you know, as much as their secondary has struggled, um, offensively just as much their running game two of their strengths from last year have become substantial weaknesses for them this season and it's reflective in their th three and six record when they went 15 and one last year and made it all the way to the Super Bowl so w what is Carolina going to be able to do are they going to put it in Cam Newton's hands you know maybe abandon the running game for at least the first half try to establish it later let Cam Newton attack what is a fairly suspect New Orleans secondary. That's something to keep an eye on as well. I'd like to see Carolina do that, actually. Attack with Greg Olson. Greg Olson quietly having a good year, but he's always been Cam Newton's favorite target. Let's see if they can get the uh, wide receivers involved, Kelvin Benjamin, and, of course, Devin Funches, because New Orleans secondary is not great either, and especially if Delvin Bro, who I would say is their top cornerback, is not able to go in this game. So should be a lot of points in this one we would expect. I wouldn't look to see much running in this game. New Orleans may do it just because they're fairly effective at it. Mark Ingram, uh, under 550 yards, so he's not putting up big yard numbers, but he is just shy of five yards per carry, maybe a little more than just shy, but he's over four and a half, certainly, so he's having a good year. Carolina, or excuse me, New Orleans just isn't running the ball that much, and why would they? Because they're passing very well. But the running game is certainly effective enough. Let's see if they do that to minimize their uh, defensive liabilities and keep Cam Newton off the field. But then again, you do that and you force Cam Newton into passing a lot, which could happen. It may just occur either way where Carolina is going up and down the field. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. I can't necessarily say that the loser is going to be out of it. Because certainly if Carolina loses, I would say they're out of it. I don't think Carolina's going to make the playoffs at this point. But if they were to beat New Orleans, they'd both be 4-6. and six. So uh, I, you know, I can't go out on that ledge and say, oh, the loser's out of it. But certainly a loss for Carolina would be very damaging. A loss for New Orleans would be damaging as well. They can get to 500 with a victory have a shot in that uh, NFC wild card. Of course, you have a lot of team, every team over 500 in the NFC East. You have the NFC North, but a lot. I think all the teams are going to beat each other up in that one, and certainly the way Minnesota is playing. And they also have to play teams from the NFC East as well. I'd say it's up for grabs, but, you know, two wild cards may come from the NFC East. But we'll get into that later in the year. As for tonight's game, <sighs> You know, last stand time for Carolina, I would expect them to come out and be desperate. But I like the Saints in this one. I, Carolina has just struggled way too much. Um, even though they're not going to be forced to run the ball, their secondary is not going to be able to hold up. And I don't think Cam Newton can 
has done enough to show this year that he can get it together in time and lead this team uh, going down the field in a passing game shootout. I expect New Orleans to put up the points. I expect Carolina to put up some, but nowhere near enough. And I will take it 34-23. The New Orleans Saints with the road victory get themselves to 500 over the Carolina Panthers. All right, so remember on Saturday we will give you the rest of Week 11's game picks. Be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much. Have a good night.